Hello guys and welcome to another MK Mobile podcast episode. Today my guest is a YouTuber. This is KC Mobile Gaming, one of the best MK Mobile YouTubers with extremely awesome content. He also does uh, MK Mobile character reviews. However, they're quite different than mine, so make sure to check his channel. So without any further ado, hi KC, how are you doing? Hi there, I'm doing pretty fine. How about you? And thank you for having me, by the way. Oh, you're more than welcome. I'm, I'm okay uh, at home, currently on, still on sick leave. They gave me like 40 days sick leave so I can focus on the channel and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, without any further ado, let me ask you something that I wanted to ask you for a long time. Why did you decide to make videos on MK Mobile? Why MK Mobile? Oh, that's a very <laughs> tough question. I think it's just because of this kind of passion that I have for this game, which I never had for any other game before. I mean, I, I was uh, a lot into Skyrim for quite a while and been spending hours in that world of the Elder Scrolls and stuff like that. But as soon as I installed MK Mobile and was playing those characters that I was playing since my childhood, you know, like Scorpion, Sub Zero, Raiden, Liu Kang, and all that stuff, and I got that on mobile and then on top in a graphic that was so much more improved compared to the Game Boy that I had back then as a boy, I was just blown away and it was so much fun to kind of de 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 develop my teams and to develop strategies and unlock gear and then combine gear. It was just an absolute blast. But as soon as I then had the idea, why, why don't we just get a complete pad with enough storage that I can just install a like, capture device that I can record my gameplay, then let's go all in MK Mobile. I love this game. I'm playing it all day long. Why shouldn't I share some of my experience with other viewers who are maybe also starting out or are kind of looking for some advanced gameplay because many channels out there that have been around were focusing mainly on beginners, you know, like which uh, teams to get first, which characters to unlock, which characters are the best. And I was always more from that perspective. I have already like a pretty maxed account. So uh, after two point, uh, before 2.0 dropped, basically everything was maxed. And I wanted to give the players who basically came off the other channels who had already uh, covered the beginner stuff a little more of the maxed out perspective and uh, giving like tips and tricks to those who wanted to go the extra mile who sticked around or who stuck around for a longer time and were in for the long run and basically that was then the reason why i started my channel with the main focus on the advanced gameplay and also putting in that little extra regarding feats of strength because nobody else did that okay so um uh... Then the question that will follow is uh, this one. Uh, which is the best thing that you like about the game? Which is the thing that you hate about the game? Oh, the best thing that I like about is absolutely the way you can combine tons of characters and equipment. And with each time you use a different piece of gear, the game plays uh, kind of slightly changes not very much with most of the gear but it's always like little nuances that are added or taken away depending on which character you add to a team which then provides a passive or which gear you uh, uh, are putting on either your main fighter or your teammates that can also then provide help for your entire team including the character that is tagged in so I would say that is definitely the part that I enjoy the most about MK Mobile, just this extreme variety of things that we have to choose from. And uh, I would say the least favorite is kind of the way NRS is responding to their players at times, because there are sometimes long stretches where we don't hear anything. The community is getting 
angry and you especially when you are on twitter you're feeling that you know you're like everybody from every side is just angry and pissed and they want answers and they want an explanation why certain things are done the way they are and you hear nothing but silence from the the uh, from the developers or wb and uh even you mentioned it a few times, like even if you are raising tickets with WB game support, then you get basically get the copy and paste answer and it leads to nothing. So that would be my biggest gripe with the game. Yeah, and if they could only, I mean, that is so easy. I don't understand why they're not doing it. Honestly, I don't. This is so easy with the annou announcement of the update, they can also include if they are buffing or nerfing certain characters and how they are doing it. This is so easy, it's mm. like uh, two sentences, but they're not doing it. And currently, for example, yeah. I still don't know whether Special Tour for Ravenous Melina is bugged or it is nerfed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, such a long thing already now, isn't one it? Year. Going on for like a year now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was and the about thing to is say, it's like about this. one year and we still have no info. Exactly. She needs this because there are 10 million bazillion items that can uh, give you resistance to stun. And if she cannot stun the enemy, then her only weapon remains the um, fact that her special two is still unblockable, so she can still deal massive damage. If she cannot do that, uh, she's really not that great anymore. Uh, even I can tell you what, for for about a year, I'm playing her only with Moloch's Ball and Chain yeah. to get that block breaker back. Exactly. I was just about to say that you can still play her with Moloch's Ball and Chain, but uh, honestly, I. I I messaged them twice or three times. I couldn't get a simple, a simple response. Is this a bug or is this, is this a nerf? <laughs> it just yeah. blows my mind. Okay. Anyways, with that the said, weird thing is like the weird thing is like even during the release notes, they are not mentioning stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Like even if they release something regarding what they did for the update and fixed a few things here and there, they're always listing stuff we basically had no problem with. True. Uh, so, with that said, I just need to check with you, what do you think about the upcoming update? Oh man, I'm excited, absolutely excited, especially since they dropped the news yesterday at the time when we are recording this, that it will be 3.0 instead of 2.8. In that moment, my head just went wild with imaginations. We might get three, four, five characters, who knows, you know, like even for the most hated 2.0 update, we had three characters right from the get-go. And this time it could be kind of similar. On top, we are promised a new game mode for Faction Wars, which would be the survivor mode. We will get Noob Cybot, a character I that know. I was waiting for for so long. I'm so hyped just for Noob Cybot alone. Don't care about the update. Give me Noob, you know? That's that's already all I needed. <laughs> and But we're getting all the other things on top, so I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, same. Uh, thing is, though, I am more uh, hyped about the new game mode because the game definitely required a new game mode. And they couldn't always give us towers because towers they kind of get repetitive especially after doing it for third or fourth or even ninth time so at some yeah. point it's not fun uh, it's not fun so uh, the problem with the game in my eyes was that there was only faction wars and nothing else for like four or even I, the game launched i believe in april 2015 so we are talking five years and a half we just have faction wars that's a lot and finally, we well, granted, we also had battle mode and Shao Kahn's tower, but uh, once you've been through those one time, that was like off the table. Yeah, exactly. Although Shao Kahn's tower still gives you like a few souls every 10 fights, so that's still worth playing the Shao Kahn tower. But battle mode, there is no reason except for finishing dailies. Exactly. So, uh, the introduction of this game mode is something really awesome. And I really hope that at some point, uh, this auto mode, which they uh, hinted, I'm not quite sure whether it is auto, just for Noob Cybot, does something specific for this character, or mm -hmm. it is something that can be applied to all characters. But I just mentioned this yesterday with Man uh, with No Game. So, thing is, uh, they can, if this is something that can be applied to every character, this is a very good way so that they can introduce in a later stage uh, a real PvP mode. And what the real PvP mode is going to be, 
you're waiting for the other character to connect, to other person to connect. Then you select your teams, then you select your equipment accordingly. Uh, and then together you just press auto and just go to battle and you watch what's going on. So I think that mm. this is something that they can do in the future. Of course, it will be, uh, it's not going to be that simple, but if you can watch and just adjust the equipment, the teams and everything, then you can watch the fight. Mm. That would be awesome. Well, I was raising that question on my channel too about the auto mode, if that might be something related to Noob Cybot in uh, a sense that you might be able to control the uh, his his like shadow duplicate, you know, like to a point where you could use it strategically in the moment when it's the most useful, or if you want the game to decide if uh, that the game basically chooses that. Uh, option for you instead if you are maybe not that skilled maybe you're learning the game still uh, that would be a possibility on the other hand making this kind of feature and uh, kind of uh, tweeting it out like that it kind of looks to me like it's a game mode or at least like a game function that is here for all characters and maybe it's just like an automatic uh, run that we don't have to grind uh, elder challenge for example you know like the first two towers just set up a few strong teams click auto and uh, then take a break okay uh so the next thing on the list i have to ask you is who is your favorite character in the game and uh i'm not asking who is the best character i'm just asking who is your favorite character which is the character that appeals to you the most for example uh, i consider marksman kunjin to be one of my favorite characters but i don't think that he's the best character well, uh, I'm pretty sure that answer would be Noob Cybot, but to be fair, he is not released yet. So my answer for this one for now would be definitely Pharaoh Ormeg. It was Pharaoh Ormeg from the start. From the moment I picked up MKX Mobile back in the days, I was basically drawn into the game because of Pharaoh Ormeg, and that never changed. I have this passion for this card. I've started to, to main Ermac. I'm basically playing all variations up and down, maybe with the exception of Silver, since he has this extremely slow block response and he's almost useless. But uh, as soon as it goes to the gold cards, I'm even championing uh, Spectral Ermac, a card that many players uh, say like it's an absolute trash card. I've been proving on my channel that I can get through a complete hard battle in Faction Wars using only spectral ermac without tagging out a single time and i've been <laughs> the first time i did that the recording kind of dropped or i forgot to click record so i had to do that hard battle all over again and the second time i just crushed it again with spectral so i have no idea why people kind of dismiss spectral ermac to be such a bad variation because he's not if you know how to play Ermac, then Ermac is such a fun character, and Pharaoh O just takes it up another level. Okay, that, that's really interesting. By the way, I don't know. Did you check? Uh, have you checked my review of uh, Pharaoh Ermac? Because I did this review a long time ago, but what I remember is that I got into huge, crazy details when it comes to his passive, and I calculated uh, a lot. And uh, in the end uh, of the of the section of the passive of my review, there is like a huge matrix of all calculations of what happens after two people die what happens after four people die how much is how much is the actual damage reduction how much is the actual critical hit chance increase so on and so on so it was one of my very best reviews in the sense that i managed to actually throw the light on what this passive actually doing in the in the way of numbers because in the passive description nobody mentions anything about numbers it just says it reduces the damage and it increases the critical hit chance okay but by how much and this is really important and it's not mentioned anywhere so i'm really kind of proud of this review because i actually managed to get the numbers and I can tell you that I have seen pretty much every single video on your channel including the Pharaoh or Mac review of course awesome <laughs> so I just want to ask you uh, on this I was extremely surprised that you didn't even put cl uh, Combat Cup Sony in top 10. And I want to hear from you right now live, what do you, uh, why do you think that she doesn't belong in top 10? E even if you don't like her, let's put that, that aside. For example, I don't like... Uh, I, I, I like so many characters, it's <laughs> difficult to say. <laughs> yeah, me Which too. Which character I don't like. But I, let's say I don't like uh, MK11 Scorpion. Yeah, I really don't like him. Honestly, he's the 
embodiment of uh, like uh, the character who is that easy to play that people are just playing this character and then forget about any other character. And because MK11 Scorpion is so great at his basic attacks chaining, he's so easy to play that any other character mm -hmm. who isn't that great at basic attacks, people say that he's a bad character. And this is the reason why I don't like MK11 Scorpion, uh, because he's the main reason that so many other characters are collecting dust. So yeah, I don't like MK11 Scorpion, but I still consider him as one of the absolute best characters in the game. So what's your stance on Combat Capsonia? Because she can literally turn the tides in any fight, in Faction Wars. Uh, she can give a red card to a very difficult match, for example, in uh, between boss towers. Uh, and then whoever coming in, imagine that uh, you need to get Jade, but Cabal is coming in after the red card. Then you can easily fear Cabal away, then get to Jade, and then uh, tag in your Combat Cap Johnny and proceed. I mean, she can literally decide matches so i was i want to know once again from you why you don't consider her top 10 gold well for for me it's mainly i see them mostly through the eyes of faction wars and not towers when i'm running towers of my first thoughts are of course uh, strike for a scorpion maybe mk11 scorpion maybe classic Liu kang maybe justice 2 raiden like people who really uh, rip and tear through the opponent teams without any issue. And I'm not even thinking about maybe she should time out somebody or something. So Combat Cup Sonya, I've never used her a single time in a single tower. No, no tower before. Not she Rai Ryu, not Black Dragon Tower, not Tower of Horror, not Lin Kuei Tower. She is non-existent when it comes to towers. And almost the same goes for me in Faction Wars because I'm kind of annoyed by her passage. I see, for example, that I have an X-ray ready with Sonya. And every time I tag her in, I forget that I haven't given a red card yet. So the one I want to X-ray, she sends the guy out, brings in the weak one, and X-ray that one. It's like, yay, Sonya, great job. I see. <laughs> and I, I have that so many times, I'm just annoyed by that passive. It's just like, ah, why can't I decide if I want to give a red card or not? Well, you know, kind of like I, I say, when uh, with Black Dragon Tremor, I would like to switch the skins in the moment it makes sense for me. And not just with every single special attack I'm executing. I want to have the control over that passive. And that's an, uh, the, basically the same thing with Sonya. I want to really be able to say, right now, red card. Because I have this, this extra bonus. But she automatically does it. Yeah. And it kind of always disrupts my, my the flow of my gameplay because most of the time I don't feel the need to tag anyone out forcefully. I can manage without that, you know. And then if I want to use her, then she sends the guy out that I want to beat. Which is the best character in the game, in your opinion? The best character? Oh my god, I'm uh, torn between MK11 Scorpion, um, classic Liu Kang, and Strike Force Scorpion. Although, technically, MK11 Jade always takes the cake because, like, how do you feed an opponent that you cannot hit? That that was was the reason why I put her like a number one in my best diamonds. You know, like every time when you face a character, it's kind of yeah, I got a strategy. If I face Liu Kang, no problem. If he cripples me, I just tag out. If uh, if an, if a different character is kind of difficult for one character that I am playing, then I will just use a character that is more suitable to beat him. But in terms of MK11 Jade, it can be turned around so easily if you don't have the necessary power to uh, go for interruptive gameplay, for example. If you have unblockable special 2 attacks or unblockable special attacks in general, then it might be not that much of a deal against MK11 Jade. But if you are basically stranded, maybe even frostbitten and slow, and then you have to get a go against MK11 Jade, she just turns you around, she snares you, then she uh, ends uh, with her crushing blow, and there was nothing you could do. Like When you play her, her passive sometimes barely triggers. When the AI plays her, that thing triggers eight times in a row. <laughs> Sometimes during the, the same uh, uh, combo string that you are tr trying, you have that three times, you know, like three times uh, embracing the shadows within one string. And if you play her, that thing doesn't even come, you know, it's like, what? Well, you can partially so, counter her with slow resistance. If you have a lot of slow resistance, the embracing the shadow isn't that, uh, 
bad for you. You can kind of survive. Mm. But still, yeah, I agree. MK11 Jade is very difficult to face on, especially with specific teams. For example, uh, I was playing a lot of assassin yeah. teams. And she was absolutely the worst matchup imaginable because uh, she cannot... I mean, two of your characters will uh, heal her. And the third one, if you don't have power, then you are kind of lost. You have to pray that you're going to evade her uh, special one. If you don't evade her special one and your assassin Jade or any other assassin gets near it, you are in a lot of trouble. Um, but mm -hmm. what do you think on the Day of the Dead Jade, to be honest? Because uh, it is true that uh, uh, MK11 Jade is pretty awesome, one of the best characters in the game. However, there's something about her. She relies on chance, while MK, while Assassin, I'm sorry, <laughs> while Day of the Dead Jade, she Day doesn't rely on chance. She just do special two and destroy anybody and you can, she cannot be touched at all. And I believe she's going to be the absolute best and even unfair character for the survival mode, because all she needs is the, the Fusion Zero Day of mm -hmm. Dead Titan and she's immortal. Well, uh, Day of the Dead Jade, I absolutely loved her from the moment she was announced. Just seeing her design, it was gorgeous. Mm. I just looked at that picture and it was like, yeah, that's Jade. That's a beautiful Jade. It looks even better than the Assassin variation. Uh, I was already uh, taken by storm as I just saw her the design. And then, of course, with the gameplay, that special two is amazing, uh, adding that shield, even giving that passive to other Day of the Dead team members. So Jade is definitely up there with the best of the best. And I also like the secret special two, like when she's below 10% health, that she basically has this complete different animation and starts to go into vampirism instead. So why do you think MK on Jade has an edge? I still think that uh, even with, if I play with my Day of the Dead Jade against MK11 Jade, that sometimes MK11 Jade is a stronger matchup against me than if it would be the other way around. I feel like as an opponent, MK11 Jade is way more dangerous than, for example, Day of the Dead oh, Jade. Yeah, sure, because I, I, I kind of know how to deal with Day of the Dead Jade. I know that I never should let her get to a special two and try to take her out before that happens, or at least make sure that she is uh, waiting on the outside until I'm ready again, maybe to take her out with either an unblockable or a special attack, X-ray, whatever. But with MK11 Jade, every time she comes into the fight as an opponent, I'm going like, well, what am I fucking doing now? I have no idea. You, because you can, never can predict if that passive kicks in, you might be screwed. You might be fine. You know, it's like always this, because it relies on chance, it makes it so unpredictable to come up with a strategy. No matter how good you play when that thing kicks in and she just snares you with a special one, your strategy is down the drain. Yeah, true. As a fighter and as an opponent, uh, MK11 Jade is much, much more uh, dangerous than both of the other two Especially Jades. Just Especially given the fact when you give her block breaker, some give her like rusty chainsaw and bladed fan. Yay! <laughs> Maybe vial of infinite blood on top and then the living dead armor. Yeah. That's a very nice setup for MK11 Jade. I'm appreciating that so much, you know, as a, as the receiving opponent. That, that's uh, where I always feel like uh, I ha still have the edge over Day of the Dead Jade, even though damage-wise, like uh, Day of the Dead Jade definitely has the edge because she can also reflect that damage back. We're absolutely fair. All right. So, who is your favorite character in Mortal Kombat? Uh, for now, I would definitely go with Noob Cybot. Nice. I've always been a uh, absolute uh, passionate Netherrealm player, so I was always intrigued by dark characters. I loved uh, Shinnok, I love the, the, the darker versions of Scorpion, like Inferno or Classic, um, Liu Kang, uh, Kitana, Kung Lao, you know, all those, those uh, revenants, basically, even the Circle of Shadow Jacks. I do, uh, still think that he's one of the worst diamond cards, but uh, like uh, in terms of design, he's one of the most beautiful looking ones. Just seeing that kind of uh, alternation of his arms, you know, the, the kind of design they gave for, for his metal arms in the Revenant variation. It's just so gorgeous. I was always drawn to this darker side. And now that we are getting noob, it cannot get darker than that, or can it? 
<laughs> so that's definitely Noob is my character. I'm so longing for his return, or at least his uh, first arrival in MK Mobile. The last time I played him was in MK Deception, and that's such a long time ago. My God, that's over 10 years, I think. And now, finally, after 10 years, I'm getting the new Cybot variation I was waiting for. He looks gorgeous. Uh, they did a great job on his design. His moveset looks incredible. The the gameplay reveal they just showed a few days ago just blew me away. Like, in that moment after I saw that, the first time I just went to my buddies in the chat and went like, guys, I think I'm no longer an Ermac main. And that means something when I say that. You know, it's just like, wow. <laughs> okay, and the next question I have is... When are you going to do a review of Boraicho? Uh, that will not happen. <laughs> why? I was just curious. Why? Do you have something? I I, I absolutely despise Boraicho. I even hated him in the moment he was added to uh, was it Deadly Alliance already and then carried over to Deception. I just cannot stand this guy puking and farting. It's I don't <laughs> find it funny. It's just disgusting. If Reptile does it, yeah, well, God, he's like a lizard. You know, he doesn't know better. Even Devora, she's she's a bug or something. You know, <laughs> but if you have then the, this uh, Borracho guy just basically attacking people with only disgusting stuff to make people laugh and i don't find it funny then the the laughter kind of gets stuck in your throat you know it's like uh, no that's kind of missed the mark i just find this character abhorrent i just want him gone i would replace him with, with a, a silver uh, tarkatan or whatever in in my collection just to get rid of this guy but you have him maxed out right have I have to max out, him? and he's doing quests. He's doing quests ever since. Uh, so you haven't played at all with him? I have played him until he was level 50. Uh, okay. So I've maxed him out all the way in Faction Wars. I know of his strength and uh, his passive and his special attacks. I have played him inside out for maybe like four weeks or something. And that basically then on a daily basis. And after that, I've put him aside... Uh, and, and he basically then was maxed out over the years, you know, like, oh, there's another fusion for Borecho. How little do I care? I don't care at all. Then uh, some, at some point he was then uh, fusion 10. And then I just used 10 level up cards and sent him back to quest. Okay. That uh, sounds like a plan. Uh, I mean, haven't you even used him uh, for, this, for his passive alone without actively using him? Just put him in a no, team? No, no. Okay. He will never be a part of my team. He will not show up on my channel unless he's an opponent and I can beat the hell out of him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's just like I dislike him so much. He is the only character I refuse to play. I'm fine with all others. I've, for example, I'm not a fan of Spec Ops, especially Jackie Briggs. I played Jackie Briggs so many times. I have did a review on her. I gave her her 9.0 or whatever I gave her in the review. Maybe it was an 8.0 or whatever what it was i absolutely can acknowledge like if uh, a character that i don't like th that it's a good character that it's fun to play but i show that is it's like it's like th th this uh, famous red cloth that you hold in front of the bull if i see borecho i'm storming against it you know it's like i will take this thing down <laughs> okay. to give it as little screen time as possible preferably with a very painful x-ray <laughs> All right. And the last, well, actually, the last question to you will be: Do you have anything to ask me? Oh, there are so many things that you would think of. Like, like what if I could ask that guy? Number one is like: How do you manage to? Stay a legit player with so many temptation in terms of hackers out there. That's a big one. It's like because I love the fact that your channel is legit and has like 6,000 followers and that shows that people actually care about real gameplay. Same goes here with GTG with over 11k followers. Always has been legit. And there are so many temptations, you know, like videos that show you how to hack the game, uh, people where you could buy completely maxed out characters or maxed out gear. 
and you still don't do it and just stick to your guns. Why? Well, uh, I've been in a situation where my account was almost maxed out and I lost interest to the game. And then I started to play another game and somewhere a little bit, a little bit before 2.0, I returned. And ever since then, uh, I've been, uh, I mean, I've been graduating, gradually improving my collection. And then I decided that uh, a lot of people after play 2.0, they don't know. Uh, a lot of stuff in the sense that who is best, who is not that best, <laughs> who is uh, bad and why he's bad and so on. And at some point, uh, having a fully maxed out collection will, will destroy the passion you have for the game. Uh, and that's the main thing that drives me, the, way, the main uh, fuel that I have. Uh, if, I, if I suddenly uh, be on a place with maxed out account and there is nothing else to grind for, there's nothing else to play for, then I won't, I won't be the guy who I am in the sense that I won't be producing that many videos, I won't be producing the passion that I have in the videos. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically this is it. Uh, currently I'm holding um, another game I'm, um, I'm promoting and yet this other game is the same situation. The reason why I am covering that game is not because it has huge following, actually it doesn't. But the reason why I'm following it is because uh, I love the game which this game is based on since I was a child and I'm very passionate about it. So this is the main thing. Uh, it's not only applicable for games, it's applicable everywhere. If you don't like what you're doing and if you're doing it just for the sake of the views and something, at some point yeah, people yeah. are going to feel it. And that's my motivation to continue. I'm re refreshing, as I mentioned, a lo long, long time ago, probably three years ago, my account was already maxed and I, I lost interest. There were no equipment there, there was nothing, there were just regular characters. And I, I'm not against spending, you said that you haven't spent, I've spent a lot. Uh, I spent actually a lot for mobile, mobile games and I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, after all, at the end of the day, people spend money on what they makes them happy. Mm -hmm. So if this game makes yeah. me happy, I won't spend on it. That, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so yeah, but uh, that's the main thing. If I, uh, for example, buy an account, a fully maxed out account, uh, it doesn't matter whether it is 10 times cheaper or 20 times cheaper. The point is that I won't be enjoying the game. And if I'm not enjoying mm -hmm. the game, then my content will get hurt. That's the thing. Yeah, I agree there. I mean, I, as I started my channel for probably the first half year, I was doing like every video for 20 views. For, literally for one, almost like a year. Like the maximum that I got was like 30, 35, and I would consider that as a, that a success. You know, I, I, was had, I always had this passion for this game, regardless how many people agree with me or not. I didn't care. I just stuck to my formula. I got better than with commentary and stuff like that, of course. Also editing maybe, and then have maybe had like more ideas what to bring up in terms of content. But basically, it's the same thing that I did like uh, a year ago or a year and a half ago by now. And I'm now seeing like so many people uh, coming on this channel and enjoying my content. And that's just so much uh, reward for me by itself that there are people out there who say like, hey, your channel is legit. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> point is, uh, there are so many people out there who want who actually don't even can afford to buy not only a hacked account, but they cannot buy even something in the game. So they want to see some mm. kind of uh, content that can relate to them. Uh, and this is, yeah. in my opinion, the, the main reason why um, uh, why a lot of people actually started to like our content. So I'm really happy about mm. it. And the thing is, uh, I mean, if, if you make a video with uh, maxed out tower equipment and you're destroying faction wars, that's fine. But uh, what is the percentage of people who have this maxed out equipment? Uh, mm. So uh, even if if we just uh, put everything aside, like whether it's morally right, whether, what is morally wrong, uh, the fact of the matter is that majority of people they cannot afford to buy anything. Uh, so mm. or if they can afford, they cannot afford to spend a lot. So having such time of content is going to be beneficial to you anyway. So I think that this is the right thing to do here. And I actually have a beginner account because my main account, I was getting bored there, and I honestly. Probably I'll start playing again Faction Wars now. And actually, <laughs> I'm playing Faction Wars only in order to record some stuff for my reviews. Uh, and mm -hmm. probably I'll start doing Faction Wars again because uh, even though for the Assassin team I did 1 million points, that, that was one of my records. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, I will start doing Faction Wars again for the sake of uh, trying to get Noob Cybot. But I will try to um, bring... Uh, 
to raise the bar for the next tower and I will try to finish it with my absolute beginner account where my biggest card is Fusion 3 Jade, MK11 Jade. So oh, I'll think what I'll be able to do. That would be interesting. Yeah. Looking forward to that. <laughs> also. So do you have anything else to ask me? Um, how about what uh, card in your collection would you consider a really bad one, but you still love it and constantly play it for some reason? And each time you do it, you know that it's bad, but you enjoy it so much that it doesn't matter to you. I believe that should be Marksman Kunjin. Marksman Kunjin, I, I wouldn't say he's bad, but he's not good as well. He's this type of character, one mistake, and he's absolutely destroyed because he's extremely squishy. And he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's at some point, very fun to play. I love the fact that his combo enders, how fast he is and how his special one follows his combo ender. So it's a pretty awesome card. I always uh, like this card. I haven't played that often using him, but in general, uh, I would always love to build a team around him. He's pretty fun to play. It's kind of interesting because you mostly say that you don't like characters that rely on chance. And his passive is all about chance. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, but uh, <laughs> in the sense that his passive, I don't regard his passive as uh, something that is required to win while losing Marks from Kunjin. While with Assassin, that's true. While with Assassin Jade, uh, if she evades like once, if that's almost game over for the enemy. If she evades twice, it is definitely game over because she starts dealing insane amount mm -hmm. of damage. With Marks from Kunjin, his passive is more like a fun passive. So uh, I don't really care what I will do with on my combo ender, even though if they buff it and I can choose, that would be much, much better. But now his passive Absolutely. is not the factor, the winning factor for this character. He's like just spamming basic attacks plus special one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, at some point defeat the enemy okay do you have anything else i would say we're through here i am kind of out of questions probably once we stop this podcast i will have like five other questions popping up <laughs> but maybe we, we can do that on a different occasion maybe you uh want to stop by on one of my podcasts uh, at a, a certain given time when maybe another update drops or just in between to have a little fun talk about the current state of the game, how we like certain aspects, maybe talk about a specific character when we want to really go in-depth analysis or something. There might be so many chances if you are up for that. I would gladly host you on one of our Combat Talks Blood episodes Okay, I, and then I will we be... can get into more questions if you like. Sure, I'll be honored to be your guest. Why not? It sounds good. Awesome. Okay, then, Casey, thank you very much for uh, stopping by and talk to you soon, I guess. It was my pleasure, man. Take care. You too. Bye bye for now. Perfect. Perfect.